Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and of course the GD match results of a corded wear woman from Estonia. Now this sample is quite unique because this sample you will not find on Explore Your DNA, you will not find the G25 for this sample and you're probably, you probably never even knew that this sample existed, but it does. Now let's get into the topic of phenotype. In terms of phenotype, she was pretty much a typical, like a typical European. You will find Europeans with this kind of a genotype anywhere in Finland or Estonia or maybe maybe not in Finland because she was heterozygous for BH2 so yeah maybe not in Finland but in Russia and Baltic region and Eastern Europe pretty much it's a very typical genotype here but she's predicted to have either hazel eyes or blue eyes with an amber center uh, Greek shaped nose and brown hair you can see the prediction here uh, I depicted her with more of a blue like a greenish eye color rather than hazel because that's what I think she had in the Pro319 Pro variation of DRD2 gene she was uh, heterozygous which means one no-go learner mutation typical genotype for Europeans and she had a 2 a 2 genotype in TAC1 which is a typical genotype for not just Europeans but actually all humans and that's what makes humans very different from chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans because they have a A1A1 there she had a heterozygous genotype in Comte's Valmet variant so not quite uh, the strongest attention span but also not quite the best stress resiliency just kind of intermediate uh, dopamine levels and in OXTR she had this very fascinating genotype she had one of the lack of empathy variations in uh, in this variant this, that's the main variant that I look for but she also had another variant that increases the levels of empathy so I'm not sure whether I can say that she had a lack of empathy or the sociopath gene here uh, she definitely did not have EDAR did not have East Asian EDAR uh, no East Asian facial traits, no uh, shovel shaped incisors or big cheekbones and she actually had the European uh, lactose persistence mutation so she was she had the European mutation that allows Europeans to consume dairy products and milk and butter and, and cheese and all that stuff and she did not have the European mutation that protects against myopia so it might have needed glasses to see in the distance or close up uh, moving on to polygenic traits she had a very high risk score for Crohn's disease uh, she had a very high risk score for Parkinson's disease she also had a very very high risk score for bipolar disorder uh, she had a pretty average risk score for schizophrenia uh, she had a pretty below average risk score for type 2 diabetes she had a pretty below average or maybe slightly average risk score for coronary heart disease and a below average risk score for asthma this uh, Eurogenes K13 result is pretty typical for Estonians, even Estonians today, it's a very, you know, you can, you can have an Estonian person score like this, but the only difference here between her and a typical Estonian is the Sub-Saharan African score, and the Sub-Saharan African score is just archaic admixture, it could be Neanderthals, it could be Denisovans, it could be some kind of archaic hominid or even Cro-Magnon, unresolved genetic drift, uh, but with the Oracle here you can see she's getting modeled as a mixture of Finnish plus Ukrainian or Estonian plus Brahui, so relative to the Estonians she's a little bit more uh, West Asian than what's typical for Estonians actually. This is what she scores with MDLPK11. Once again, a very modern result, a very modern European result, but the only non-modern thing here is the 6% African. So this is archaic admixture, some kind of Cro-Magnon, unresolved, unresolved ancient genetic drift, not enough modern European drift, right? So with the Oracle, she's closest to corded wear from Poland, uh, but she, this, uh, this calculator does not have references for CAR1 in Estonia, right? So if, if it did, she would score 100% that. And uh, this is what she scores with MZLPK16. Once again, you can see the 5% Sub-Saharan. Uh, this is not any kind of actual modern African admixture. It's just typical stuff for Cromanions to score. Cromanions with these calculators score all kinds of stuff and like 20 or 30% Sub-Saharan too. And with the Oracle, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Estonian plus very funny Estonian plus all kinds of group uh, groups in West Africa. So there it is. And here is the G25 for this uh, sample. Now, I simulated the G25 myself and actually I don't think... I haven't done my research, maybe you will find it somewhere, but I don't think you will find the G25 coordinates for the sample anywhere besides my YouTube channel. And uh, now in terms of modern groups, she's pretty much pretty much a typical um, typical Northeast European. She's got a little bit of Udmurt or some kind of Siberian ancestry relative to Estonians, a little bit more Siberian than what's typical for Estonians. But overall, just a very typical modern Northeast European. And uh, here is her results with Pandiene LK10. Now we're used to seeing these Corded wear and Bell Beaker folks score a bunch of Caucasus, like 30%, 35% Caucasus, but she doesn't have, she doesn't have that much Caucasus. She has actually less Caucasus than me and every family member I have, so uh, not a very Caucasus person, but she is an Indo-European for sure. 
um, mostly European HG with the PondDNA LK12 calculator as well, but there is that Sub-Saharan too. And with the Oracle here, she is closest to Corded Ware Estonia, but this is a different sample. This is RISE00, which I've never encountered actually. Um, but she's getting modeled as a mixture of this RISE00 plus Bichon or Kar Karelian Hunter Gather. So she is actually more Northern than this RISE B00 um, Estonian Corded Ware person. And in terms of the modern populations, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Belarusian plus Somali or like, this is basically the unresolved Cro-Magnon drift that I was talking about earlier. Here's what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6 here. Once again, not that much southern stuff, only 27% Natufi, and that's less than what's typical for even Northern Russians today. Uh, but with the Oracle, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Russian plus all kinds of East Africans. That's once again because of the unresolved Cro-Magnon drift that she's got. And with Gidrosa K3, we see the same thing. We see her score 4% Sub-Saharan African without actually having any Sub-Saharan African admixture. Thank you guys for watching until the end. Uh, the link to download this file in 23andMe format will be in the description, but also the link, well not the link, but the G25 coordinates for this file are also going to be in the description of the video. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy what I do here on YouTube.